This podcast is brought to you in part by ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. Whether you're buying or selling home, condo, or any type of property, trust Amanda to help match you with up to three top agents in your area. ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. Hey, all you rock stars from Washington, D.C. This is the Rock on the Money podcast, episode 143. It's time to talk about your saving, investing, and protecting all of your hard-earned money. We're here to coach you along that path to retirement and financial independence. I'm Craig, your certified master financial coach, along with Amanda. She is a corporate in-house lawyer and real estate referral agent, and we're grateful you joined us. Check it out at Facebook at facebook.com slash rockonthemoney or the website at rockonthemoney.com. Hey, girl. Hey, how's it going? So the last time that we've talked to you, uh, you were going to go camping. Yes, I you were did go, go on camping. a trip somewhere in the East Coast, some unknown mythical mm-hmm. place. How did it go? Um, it went great. Yeah, we, awesome. we went to the Smoky Mountains, did a lot of hiking, uh, hiked on the Appalachian Trail. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, we saw some black bears. Um, yeah, lots of hiking there. And then we were in the town of Pigeon Forge and caught a dinner show. And then I'm positive that's where we caught uh, COVID as well. You got sick? Yeah. Well, actually, I, I knew that. Myself. I wasn't going to bring it up. but you didn't. <laughs> Yes, in the great state of Tennessee. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go down this road, but I will mention that all my family lives down there and I'm not visiting them. That's a state that I'm trying to stay away from. Yeah. And I would yeah. say, yes, people always ask when they find out you had COVID, they ask if you were vaccinated. Yes, we are fully vaccinated. Uh, yes, we were wearing masks except when we were eating. And apparently that's all it takes, <laughs> when, yeah. especially when, you know, 90% of the people around you are not wearing masks yeah. and probably not vaccinated. So ha- yeah, having family there, I know it's like 20, I don't know what the current number, but what, 30% got vaccinated or something like that. I saw this week, it's like 40. Oh, low so 40%. it is going. So the, I heard they're changing the minds down there. Well, I don't know. Want, I, I don't but, think so. Based on the signs I saw at businesses and stuff there, I don't think there's much oh, okay. <laughs> much okay. well, of a change. Well, I don't plan on visiting anyone down there. I until would, I would, I would not safe. recommend it. So, um, yeah, I, for anyone who's not interested in getting sick, I would not recommend going to Pigeon Forge or Gatlinburg area. I personally am just not doing pretty much anything until probably spring. I'm just yeah. hoping for something better at this point. I mean, I go out. Don't, don't I mean... Well, I, I would just say, like, we went on a cruise like a month ago and didn't get COVID because, you know, people, the, the vaccines work. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone on the cruise just about was vaccinated and we're following mask mandates, um, you know, so we were on a very confined space with a lot of people and didn't get sick. We went someplace with people who aren't following those protocols and almost immediately got sick. So Matt mm. got sick first. He had mild flu symptoms. I got sick second and I was actually in much worse shape and had the antibody treatment, yeah. um, which seemed to help. But, well, yeah, I'm we in the had, Northeast. Bre- we had breakthrough cases. It's it's no joke. It was extremely painful. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, on that happy note, well, I'm, <laughs> I, personally, I'm glad you're better because- I don't like hearing my friends with COVID. <laughs> it's like, because my cousin has it and she still can't taste anything. I think it's just now coming back. Yeah, I still can't smell. Um, I, I lost my sense of smell about three days in. Wow. So it definitely is not the first symptom I felt. My The sore throat was the first thing. Really? Yeah, my cousin, <laughs> she, it's, she she's out in California and it's just now coming back. And this is yeah. months later. So, yeah, no, my mom said it took about four weeks for her to get her smell back. Mine, mine seems to be slowly coming back and well, it's only good. been, it's been a little over a week. So, okay. So we have four questions we're going to go over. We'll do two. We'll take a break, but I love these questions. So let me read this one for you. Okay. I want, I want to be in Oh, uh, wait a minute. I want to, oh, there's the Sorry. cough. Oh no. Let me put my mask. I got my mask on now. Oh my God. All right, here we go. It lingers. It lingers. It lingers. People. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. T- I'm gonna chew on some zinc here. <laughs> okay. I want to enjoy my life, but I also want to be an everyday millionaire. Yeah. Please help me find a balance. I'm 25 years old. Oh wow. That's a Good young for person. You. Yeah. I was not thinking about the possibility of being an everyday millionaire when I was 20. I mean, I was, I, but I thought I'd have to win the um, the lottery. <laughs> you know, that's a good point. I'm thinking when I was 25, I just, I was only like 
second year in the fire department and you're in your 20s it's yeah. the 80s i always thought being a millionaire would be that's just for that's for those fancy people on that tv show dallas or something like that yeah it was not, it's for people who either already are in a rich family or win the lottery but, right like those would seem like the only two options i never thought it would be possible to work my way there but isn't that, that how tv shows movies all that that's how they portrayed it if you're a millionaire, you're like, you have oil wells and it wasn't a mechanic or a bus driver. Or which, a school teacher. Or yeah. school teachers. But the reality is we know now, because mm-hmm. we have data, that yeah. the real millionaires are waitresses, school teachers, government work. I mean, people that do normal jobs. It's not what you think. It's how you treat the money. But anyway, so what they want to know, how can they try and get there and live their life at the same time? Yeah. So you're young enough that you don't have, so the magic of time is on your Mm -hmm. side. So you're young enough that you don't have to devote as large of a portion of your monthly income to your savings in order for it to grow, to become a millionaire. If you were playing catch up in your forties, then, you know, uh, you'd have to be putting away a much larger amount every month in order to to meet that. But, um, you're young enough you should be putting some money away every single month into your savings in order to meet that goal, but it should still leave you with something to live your life um, and give you that balance that you're seeking. There you go. But I love that you're thinking about it. I mean, at 25, I thought it was hopeless. I I thought I was just destined (laughs) to live, to continue the cycle of working every day and never. Yeah. Well, I mean, I am working every day. (laughs) Well, yeah. Well, look at me. I'm retired. I'm a content creator. I am working harder now. You just changed jobs. (laughs) I know, I know. It it is a job. It's just not one of those real jobs that people say, which there is no such thing as a real job, but in 2021, but. It's just not a W-2 job is all it is. That's all it is, yeah. Um, People are like saying, you work harder in your retirement than I do in my current 40-hour job. I'm thinking, tell me where there is a 40-hour job out there. There is no such thing as a 40-hour work week job in my opinion, but. Do you think you only work 40 hours a week? Oh, no, absolutely no. not. Uh, I mean, maybe this week while I was sick with COVID. <laughs> yeah, then they had pity on you. I, well, we can't yeah, give it to her. I, I, She's got, sick. I got a little bit of a pass, you know, but um, I still had to get my work done. And now I'll be working through the weekend to catch up because I'm behind. So it's not really a pass. <laughs> Question number two. If you want to try and pay off your house in 10 years, do you stop contributing your retirement for those 10 years and dump everything into the house? Y- yeah, yeah, you would, but uh, I don't know why you would do that because yeah. y- y- you you need to have both done in order to retire. So again, the magic of time on your side, you should be contributing to your retirement. Once you're in, once you're past baby step three and you have all your debt taken care of except for your house payment, then you should be simultaneously be paying off your house and in, investing. You don't want to lose out on years of gains just because you wanted to pay off your debt. And this they're is both getting, important. Right. And this is getting back to the baby steps where actually baby step four is contributing 15% of your income to retirement. Baby step five is if you want to do the the kids college fund and six is paying off your house. Yeah. And all those are actually done at the same time. You don't do four and then five and then six. You actually do them all at the same time. Like you said, if you stop putting money into retirement and you concentrate on the house, the time part is gone. You should be doubling your money every eight to 10 years. And if you're not putting that money in there to double, well, you're actually making less than if you pay off your house. Could, depending on markets and where this house is located. But typically, typically in general, you'll make more in that stock market than you will in that house that you're trying to pay off. But I appreciate they want to pay off the house. And I, I would encourage that before you retire. I would not want a mortgage payment, would you? Uh, no, I, no. I don't want a mortgage payment now. <laughs> right. Nobody, nobody wants mortgage pay. And are rates going up right now? Uh, I think they are. I think yeah. the feds just increased the mortgage rates this last week. Those um, bastards. Not, not a lot, but enough for people <laughs> to start panicking. Hey, let's take a quick break and learn about your great company. Oh yeah. My yeah. Great company. Yeah. yeah. Your referral business. It's great. And right now people are talking about buying and selling and all that in their houses and, uh, I'm gonna get yeah, I mean, the market's good. still hot. If you wanted to sell, you're going to, you know, the market's still hot. And if you're still looking to buy, guess what? It's starting to 
um, level out a little bit. So, you know, where you used to see 50 offers on a house, now it's five to 10. Um, mm. There's still solid offers, but you're in a much better position to get the house of your dreams now. So mm. it's actually kind of, it's at this point now where it's kind of a good place for both buyers and sellers. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Cause I would, I would not want to buy what it was what in the last year and a half. Right. All that. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Rock on the Money. Hey there, rock stars. Amanda here with ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. Are you about to sell your home or excited to buy your first or next home? I'll be honored to help you find an expert to work with you in your local area. At ChoiceRealtyConnect.com, I'll help match you with up to three qualified licensed agents that specialize in your specific market. Choice Realty Connect serves every zip code in all 50 states with a network of 15,000 top rated agents that are ranked within the top 5% for sales. Whether you're selling or looking for a condo, new construction, retreat, vacation property, or you're a first-time home buyer, let me connect you with the perfect top agent today. ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. The choice is yours. Amanda Braun is a Florida licensed real estate with a brokerage Realty Connect. Rockland, USA. Welcome back to Rock on the Money with Amanda and Craig. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash rock on the money. Plus all of our previous episodes, 150 of them plus over at rockonthemoney.com. Plus we're on your Alexa device or Google, iHeartRadio. We're anywhere a podcast resides. I saw that Spotify is now the number one podcasting, um, what, what do you call it, platform? Yeah, 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 yeah. Matt, yeah. Well, and we do highlight, that is one of the top five. I only t- highlight the top five platforms out there you know apple, oh, we're everywhere but we're everywhere but see a lot of these platforms actually will take from apple or someone else and replicate that news feed of the podcast so i only concentrate on the top five which is about 90 something percent of where all the listeners are at i saw that i think delta airlines is now offering spotify podcasts on, in flight Ooh, we need to get on delta yeah i love delta i'm a delta girl hey i'm not partial to any of them anymore <laughs> uh, question, number, question number three how, uh, now I'm coughing you got me coughing now uh, <laughs> this is the, this is the I COVID am still podcast. in quarantine so you can't can't blame it on me no no I, I've been self quarantining for since when uh, question number three how does everyone feel about purchasing a home right now we just talked about this oh yeah we were just talking about this Yeah, uh, I would like to buy a duplex to rent one side of it Oh, so they want to live in one side and rent the other half. That's a pretty neat idea. But Yeah, we call that realtor. house hacking. But the market seems crazy right now. There you go, Amanda. Um, Finish up your conversation. Yeah, so I think it's less crazy than it had been in the last 12 months. It's, it's starting to flatten out. I mean, it's. I don't think, and I've said this for the past 12 months, I don't think that rates, that prices on homes aren't necessarily going to come down or crash as people are, are afraid of. I don't think there's a crash coming in. Um, but I think thing, the craziness has slowed down. So I think it's leveling out. Um, buying a duplex, living in one side and renting out the other half is always a good idea if you can pull it off because oftentimes the rent on the other side will cover your mortgage costs on your side and you live for free. And you build equity at the same time. So I think that's an excellent idea. Um, If you're buying something with four or fewer units, then you can still just get a conventional loan. And it doesn't have to be, you know, one of these like business loans that you have to get if you're buying uh, an apartment building with more than four units. That's interesting. Yeah. So you can still get a conventional home loan. Um, Sometimes they require 25% down if you're buying a multi-unit property. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, work with your lender, uh, obviously 25% down is not an across the board rule. So if you work with like a local credit union, you're going to have some more flexibility. Um, mortgage rates, yes, they've gone up a little bit, but they're still really good right now. So I think it's a great time to buy if you can find the right buy. 
All right, last question. And this probably should have been the first question now that I look at it. We buried the lead, as they say. Should I be waiting to start a Roth IRA or any type of retirement investment until debts are paid? I have about 12 to 15 months of student loan payments to be debt free. An investment guy came to my work. I want to make sure I'm doing things correctly. Yes, you're doing things correctly. So I'm going to let Craig here in a minute talk about the baby <laughs> steps again, because this is like the foundation for everything that we, we discuss. But you are absolutely doing it correctly. And don't let this investment guy uh, dissuade you. Otherwise, he's motivated to try and get you to invest because he that's how he makes money. Right. So um, don't. Don't fall for, I mean, so obviously investing is a great idea, but only after you've paid off your debt. So get there. You're so close. You only, I mean, only having a year left of student loan payments is awesome. You are so close to that finish line. There are so many people who are um, nowhere near that. So you're, you're real close, get there and then start investing. But real quick on these investment guys, guys, listen, these guys need to make quotas for, for whoever they're working for. That is how they make their money. And they are not your friend. Okay. They, they are giving the corporate spiel of whatever they're told and they need you to sign up and they have to meet certain quotas. And they're also trying to win monthly prizes to be, yeah. the, it's a sales gig is all it is. I'm not saying that's bad. Just understand what their purpose and what their intentions are. And so, also, you don't need an investment guy. You no. can do everything all on your own without a guy. People find it very hard to believe it's this easy. It is easy. You don't need these people. You don't. I'm not saying they're bad. Just understand that it's their job and they need you to sign up. So anyway, as Amanda said, here are the baby steps. Baby step one is you need $1,000 emergency fund, your initial emergency fund. Because baby step two is when we're going to pay all of our debts except for the house, which is where this person at. You are in baby step two, assuming you have $1,000 in the bank and you can cover just some emergency that can pop. Once you're- Can I just say, go um, ahead. Uh, don't get disheartened if you find that right after you get this $1,000 emergency fund, you suddenly have something come up where you need to use the emergency fund and now you're not able to start on your chipping away at debt right. as soon as you want to. That's exactly what the emergency fund is for. Right. Um, you know, I, as I said before, we own some rental properties and I have not gotten a full rental check uh, because I have a management company. And so every time there's like a a repair or something. They just deduct the cost of repair before they send me my check. Yeah. Uh, I haven't gotten a full check in months because really? something has happened at this house every single month. Some of them small, some of them larger. Um, but you know, things happen right. every single month and just like on this trip and suddenly my husband's truck isn't working the way it's supposed to be working. So then it was in the shop yesterday. And of course that's a couple hundred dollars. Right. So, um, I know it can get super disheartening if you feel like you're stuck on step one for a really long time, but step one is step one for a reason. Um, and it's much better to have the emergency fund and use it than to go into debt when these things come up and put yourself further behind. So it's, it's okay to tread water. You just don't want to continue to go further and further underwater. As a reminder, if you use that emergency fund, you go back to step one, get back to a thousand, and then you go back to your debts. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah, I'm saying. We all you might go be back. stuck on step one for a little bit if things come up, but it's better to have that than you know to continue to contribute to your debt. And once you pay off your debts, then you baby step three is you need to build up three to six months of your expenses, not yeah. income, your expenses. Income. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully, if you're budgeting correctly, your expenses are less than your income. If they're more than your income, then you need to go back and cut expenses or <laughs> increase your income. Yeah. Yeah. You, or you need a bigger. Yeah. You need to make more money. Go get another job. Be part of what I did, Amanda, the, the resignation generation. What is it? This yeah. is the, the great resignation. The great resignation. It's still yeah. going on, apparently. It is. <laughs> it's spreading It's a great like time crazy. to be looking for another job. Oh, yeah. Because people are desperate to hire people right now. And they, oh, yeah. And then baby step it's four. It's never been easier to find a job. <laughs> right? If I wanted to stop what I'm doing now and go get a job, I could easily get a job and probably make good money. But I'm not. 
uh, and hiring uh, bonuses and all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, baby step four is uh, 15% into retirement. Baby step five is putting money away for college. Optional. Optional. And you and, and I not, are coming. Not for your college, for your, your yeah. you know. Uh, and baby college. step, yeah, baby step six is paying off your mortgage. Baby step seven is living like no one else and give back generously. Yeah. There you go. All right. Very good. And Amanda, I know you're recovering from COVID. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad you made it through this episode. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I power through. <laughs> Does this mean you're now vaccinated against whatever you got? Well, I was vaccinated. Oh, good point. All right. I was I was fully vaccinated, apparent, but now I probably have like super antibodies between getting COVID and then getting the antibody treatment as well. Um, oh my god! Yeah, I, I think I'm super immune, um, but I'm also going to go get my flu shot because I get it every year, and yep. I I know I've gotten the flu even on years. Uh, you know, yeah. occasionally on years when I've had the flu vaccine, but um, I'd still put my my um, wager on the vaccines versus not having a vaccine. Yeah, because they always guess about what strain will be the one and they, they usually hit it. Sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you know, vaccines work, but nothing is 100%. No. So that's why we have these breakthroughs. I, I happen to, we happen to fall into this category of the, you know, six or 7% who still get COVID even with being vaccinated. So I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but I, I think it would have been much, much worse had I not been vaccinated just because of how badly I felt and the fact that I do have a tendency towards asthma, but I did not have a, it didn't get in my lungs, which right. seems to be the case with people who are vaccinated. Thank God it didn't do that. It's, no, I mean, I had everything else that was really awful and painful, but it never got into a breathing situation. Thank so, God. That's yeah, what I was worried about. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah. uh, I'm glad you're doing better. And knowing when you got it, when you told me and how great you sound now. Oh, yeah. That's a fast recovery. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, it was, it was about a week. Yeah. It's not bad. Anyway, mm-hmm. it's good to have you back. All right. Yeah. But this episode's over. So, guys, check out Facebook.com slash Rock of the Money for more. You can find Amanda on Instagram and Twitter at Agile Amanda. And you can find me on all of your favorite social media platforms at Rockland USA. Don't forget to check out the website and subscribe to the podcast. All the links are right there on the front page, rockonthemoney.com. Please subscribe and leave comments to our podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, or even your favorite app that you got right there on your phone. Those help us out a lot. If you're ever looking for a specific topic or content that we've produced over time, just go to the website and in the search bar, just type in your topic, be it 401k, stimulus check, or anything, and everything comes right up for you. We have so much gratitude that you've taken your time out of your day to listen to our podcast while you're walking, driving, traveling, or whatever you're doing. Please send us an email. Let us know how you're doing out there. Podcast at rocklandusa.com. So long, everybody. Thank you very much again. We'll see you again next time. All opinions expressed by the host are solely their own and do not reflect the views of any company, affiliates, or advertisers. Investments or strategies mentioned in the show may not be suitable for you. Before acting on any information in the show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and strongly consider seeking advice from your own financial or investment advisor.